So what makes the difference between a beginner drone pilot and a professional one? What are some things that intermediate or even advanced pilots do that beginners don't? As you become more experienced and comfortable flying a drone, there are some things that you can start doing to make your experience more enjoyable as well as more efficient. So today I'd like to discuss just three things that you can do that will let you know you are on your way to becoming a more professional drone pilot. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Russ and this is 51 Drones. So let's get right to it. The first thing that moves you from beginner status into intermediate is hand launching and hand catching your drone. Now I always recommend that beginners use a landing pad and that's mostly for safety reasons, but it's also to give confidence to anxious pilots that are concerned about precision landing accuracy, should they need to use that return to home feature, or if the drone needs to come back home by itself, if it loses signal, it just helps those new pilots be more comfortable that their drone is gonna come right back to where they launched it from. But there may be times where it's just not feasible to use a landing pad or even appropriate for you to set your drone on the ground. And that's why it's important to practice hand launching and hand catching your drone. Now, when it comes to hand launching and hand catching your drones, you guys, it's really not rocket science. There's not that much to it. There's dedicated videos out there on how to do it. I just have a couple of recommendations. Now, when you're hand launching, you're gonna be using the app on your phone or your mobile device or whatever you're using. You're not gonna be using the sticks and you're gonna to have to do it with one hand. So what I recommend doing is holding the controller up against your stomach like this, hold the top of the controller with your fingers, and then you're gonna use the thumb to press that auto launch button, okay? So that's my first tip. Secondly, when you're launching, there's a number of different ways that you can hold the drone. I recommend holding the drone like this, with your thumb on this side, your fingers on this side, and like you're gonna throw a dart, okay? Just like that. Don't hold it with your palm out like this, okay? Because there's too much risk of you dropping your drone. It doesn't give you a very secure grip. This is gonna give you a really secure grip and I just think it's the best way to do it. And then when you're launching, make sure that you're holding it up high and away from you. You don't wanna be holding it with your elbow against your side here because those blades could possibly cut your beautiful face. So you wanna hold that drone out as far as you can. Then you're gonna go ahead and put that controller up against your stomach, tap the auto launch, hold the takeoff button, and just let it do its thing, okay? The drone's gonna go up by itself. You don't have to push it up, you don't have to help it, you don't have to resist it or anything. Just as soon as you feel that drone start to lift, just slowly let go and it's gonna take off. Now, when you catch your drone, when you hand catch your drone, I recommend don't catch it that same way that you launched it. Don't catch it with your fingers up like this because you're gonna have a tendency to reach up and grab it and you could get your fingers into the propellers. So I recommend when you're hand catching to have your palm out like so, all right? And then when, a, when the drone comes down to your palm, then you can squeeze the bottom of the drone. So I'll show you right now how to do that. Let the drone get straight above you, okay? And then you're gonna reach fully up above your head and let the drone come into your hand, okay? All right, and just like that, there's less risk of you cutting your fingers when you, when you catch it like that. The other thing is if you have downward vision positioning on, it's gonna hesitate, it's not gonna come down right away. So just keep holding that left stick down and it will eventually come down because you've told it that the landing area is safe. So don't stress out. The more you practice it, the easier it's gonna get. And like I said, it's not rocket science. Practice it about 10 times and you'll have it down. Another transition to becoming an intermediate drone pilot from a beginner drone pilot is to use the tools that are available to you on the app, whether it be the DJI Fly app or the DJI Go 4 app. But there's a couple things that you need to start using that's gonna make you a better drone videographer and cinematographer. And you're gonna use a couple of things here in the camera settings. So you're gonna click on the settings and go to camera. And the first thing that you're gonna check on is the histogram. This is the histogram right here. I'm gonna go back out to the screen. This right here is the histogram. And I've made a couple of videos about this already, but I'll just remind you, you want the histogram to be well balanced. Basically this shows you the balance of the highlights and the lows in here in the shadows. You don't want this to be too high or too low. So I'll give you an example. If I go ahead and turn up, let's say I decrease my shutter speed right here and I'm gonna decrease my shutter speed all the way down to one over 500. Look at the histogram right there, okay? 
See how that spike is way over on the right hand side, the highlight side. On the other hand, if you go all the way too far over to, let's say I got the shutter speed too fast, it's not letting in enough light, those shadows are gonna be way down on the left hand side. Okay, you want that histogram to be well balanced. So there's a couple of ways to make sure that you got this set right. Number one, look at your histogram. You can see there that the shadows and the highlights are pretty well balanced. The other thing is to look at your compensation down here. This, this meter right here says plus 0.7. Now that is suggesting that it's a little bit too bright. Okay, so I'm gonna change the shutter speed a little bit to one over 1250. Now I'm gonna leave this at plus 0.3 because you can see that my histogram is great. It's not over the edge on that right hand side. So my exposure is pretty good. It might be a little bit bright there in the snow. And that's another tool I wanna show you is you can click on this overexposure warning. Check that on. And that's gonna show you if anything is overexposed. And you can see right now, nothing is overexposed right now. So let's go ahead and change that shutter speed again. We're gonna make things too bright. Whoops, let's go the other way, sorry about that. So that's gonna put these zebra lines on there and the zebra lines tell you, wait a minute, that's way overexposed. And you might not be able to see this when you're looking at it on your phone, especially on a bright sunny day. Today's not a good example because it's a cloudy gloomy day. Uh, but that's why you wanna use that overexposure warning. So that's gonna put those zebra lines on there and that's gonna show you, hey, you got something a little bit too bright here. See, if you look at the histogram, everything looks okay. But then if you look at the overexposure warning, you can see that there's some spots that are a little bit too bright. So you can adjust that by adjusting your shutter speed or your ISO. So right there, everything looks good on the histogram and the overexposure warning. The last one I wanna show you that intermediate and pro uh, drone pilots use are the grid lines. And this is just to make sure that you're getting proper uh, composition in your images. So you can choose the center, the X grid lines right there. You can also choose the grid pattern right there. Okay, or you can choose center point or you can have them all on there. Now I like to use just the grid lines, but you might wanna use all of them. And the reason I use grid lines is to determine how I have my sky set in the frame. So right here, you either want your um, horizon set to the top third line and you're focusing on that, on the bottom two thirds, okay? Or if you wanna focus on say like a sunset or maybe you got some cool clouds and you're doing like a hyperlapse or something like that, you know, you put that horizon line on the bottom third, okay? Now, I don't have a subject for this frame. Now, that's a faux pas on my part. You should always try to have a subject when you're taking video with your drone. So right now, my subject really is the river, but most of the time, you wanna have a subject in the frame, and that's where you use these grid lines. You wanna have your subject on one of the thirds. So on the right-hand third, the left-hand third. Um, sometimes you can have your subject in the center of the frame as well. And sometimes you want to highlight what's in the center of the frame. And so that's why you would want to turn on the grid lines for the center point and the X lines. That's going to show you the center of the frame as well. So, so those are some tools that you need to start using that's going to transition you from being a beginning drone pilot into a intermediate and even a professional level drone pilot. Now, one thing I should mention, if you've never used those grid lines before, just know that they're kind of distracting at first. Like it takes a while to get used to them, but after just a few flights, you realize that you kind of look past them and you only use them when you need to really focus on your subject on the screen. Like they really help you when they need to, but at first they're gonna be kind of distracting. So just be aware of that. Now the third and final best practice that you should start doing to make yourself a better drone pilot is to research the area that you're gonna be flying in. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me give you an example. This summer, my family and I are headed to Colorado on vacation and we're gonna be staying in Estes Park because we wanna go through the Rocky Mountain National Park. We wanna see the sites and do some hiking and things like that. Now, of course, you can't fly within the National Park, but guess what? You can fly in Estes Park. So to find some of the best spots to fly from, I went on Google Maps and I just explored the area of Estes Park and the surrounding areas. I looked for good parking spaces. I looked for a place to stay that would be kind of close to where I wanted to fly. And then what I did is I opened up the Aloft app to make sure that the airspace that I wanted to fly in was uncontrolled. 
You see, I don't have to worry about anything once I get there. I just want to start my drone, launch it up and fly and capture the sights. So once I saw that everything was good to go, I had more of a plan on where and how I'm going to fly. I don't even have to be concerned about it. And yeah, sure, the situation might change. Once I get there, I might see a spot that I really want to fly at. But overall, at least I have a plan. And because I have that planned, my flight's gonna be more safe and it's gonna be more enjoyable. So unless you're very familiar with the area that you're gonna be flying, I do suggest hopping online and doing just a little bit of research. All professional drone pilots do this and the information is right there at your fingertips. So do your research and you will not only have more fun, but you'll save battery life, You'll save time driving around looking for that perfect spot. You won't have to worry about flying your drone too far out of line of sight. And you can pinpoint the best scenes and subjects to capture before you even get there. Oh, and then one more thing that I do need to mention, make sure that you research your local UAV rules as well. Just Google the town or the area that you're gonna be going to and then also type in UAV rules. And then one other great idea is to ask on the forums, like go on the DJI forums or mavicpilots.com or the Facebook groups. I did find this one from mavicpilots.com from someone that actually lives in Estes Park and he gives a great suggestion on where to fly from. So make sure you check out local regulations as well before you fly anywhere because they are changing all of the time. So there are three things that you can start doing that will help you level up your drone pilot status. Practice your hand launch and landing, use the assistive tools that the app gives you to capture better footage, and do some pre-flight research to be more efficient and find more striking subjects to capture. I do hope that I helped you with these tips today. And if I did, click on that thumbs up button, subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Follow me on social media, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for extra fun content that you won't see here on the channel. Go and watch this video right here next because I think it will literally change your life for the better. Have a great day everyone. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.